Good afternoon, everybody. It's a beautiful day here in Malmesbury. The sun is shining. It's a Friday afternoon. I don't have a wedding this weekend. I'm heading off to Amsterdam next weekend for a workshop. Then I think I'm off to Dubai for Golf Photo Plus. Then I think Vegas and then for WPPI and weddings, all that kind of stuff starts then. Um, I'm a bit tired. I didn't get back till about one o'clock this morning from doing a talk last night at uh, Wokenham Camera Club, which is a lot of fun. And today I am going to be talking to you about the thing that I get asked absolutely the most, uh, which is above and beyond how do I become a Fujifilm X photographer, the question I get asked the most is, how do you do your black and white edits? So I'm going to show you that today in Lightroom and I'm going to talk to you about converting a raw file to the way that I like to do my black and whites. We have images that are going to go from this to this. Uh, many, of you, many of you will know that I shoot JPEG quite a lot and I will show you in another video I think how I take those final JPEGs from the camera, from the Fujifilm camera and convert them into the black and whites that I have with this similar kind of styling really. Uh, but for today it's the RAW files, these are Fujifilm RAW files but of course the same principle applies to any camera that you use, in fact this is exactly the same technique as I used to use my Canon cameras way back when, 5D Mark I, exactly the same principle. So before we get going I just want to say thank you very much to all of you that have subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe if you haven't, if you hit that bell thing down in the corner there left hand side I think that you will get notifications on any future videos and there will be plenty of them throughout this coming year. If you do like the video obviously please like it please share it really helps me out comment below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. So with that in mind let's head over to Lightroom and get on with this edit. This is the image we're going to recreate today. This is the final image, the one that we're going to work towards using the Lightroom workflow. It's just a simple snapshot. It's a snapshot of my little boy Alby in our kitchen here in Malmesbury last year sometime. This photograph was taken on the Fujifilm GFX. You can see the detail there in the eye. Look at that, that's the plate reflected on the table in his eye there. And this style, this look, this kind of warmed up, slightly contrasty look, it's something that I really like. It's something that I've been doing for many years, even way back with my 5D Mark Ones. When I shopped with those, I was trying to produce this style of imagery or this style of look at the finish, if you like. Just out of interest, let's have a quick look at the JPEG that came with that RAW file. Uh, this is the one that came straight out of the camera. It's pretty nice, it's a classic Chrome image in its own right, it's okay. I'm now going to create a virtual copy of the RAW file that we're gonna work with, and that's basically so we have a reference point so we can check see how we're getting on and compare it at the end to the final image. So I've created the virtual copy. I'm now going to reset that image. So this is exactly how the raw file looked when it came out of the camera. I was always told that the first thing you should do when editing an image is the white balance check. So we'll do that first. Uh, white balance, I, I kind of, I always tend to go for the whites of the eyes or the teeth or something like that if I can find it. That's okay, that's off the white of the eye. Just out of kind of interest more than anything, I'll try the um, background on the table there. And, you know, it's okay. But I think the whites of the eye probably gives a more neutral image and more neutral look and a better color. Next thing I want to do is any kind of exposure correction. So I'm just going to increase it very slightly, I think. Just brighten it up very slightly. I'm just going to pull the shadows down as well, I think. I just want to see that come down slightly. Boom. Take that background back. So let's get into the nitty gritty. We want to try and make this image black and white, monochrome. And of course in Lightroom, uh, as you all know, there are many ways to make a black and white image. You can simply click the black and white button and it's gonna create a uh, pretty decent black and white. It's, it's, it's kind of gray and a bit bland, etc. I'm not particularly a big fan of that. And so I'd probably pull down the shadows and you know play around with it from that point of view if need be. However, I'd really only use that if I was testing to see if an image has enough density, etc., to make a black and white. So I'm gonna back out of that. The other way to create the black and white is just pull the saturation down. And that's okay also. It's essentially just removing the color, I suppose. It's just you know, really bringing that saturation right down to zero to give us that monochrome image. But again, it's not necessarily the way that I would start out creating the black and white. So now I'm gonna come all the way down to the camera calibration panel, right the way down in the bottom right-hand side. Those of you that shoot with Fujifilm cameras, and as I said earlier, this is a GFX image, so it's from a Fujifilm camera, will be aware that if you drop down the profiles, this is for RAW files of course, you will see all of the profiles that you have in your camera. 
and if you shoot with a Canon for example in here I think you're going to see things like camera faithful, camera neutral, uh, camera portrait I think is one of theirs also but for those that shoot Fuji you're going to see all of these film simulations. My favourite film simulation in the Fujifilm cameras is the Acros film simulation and I love the red filter. So when we select that we're going to see Adobe's version of that, Adobe's translation if you like of the Acros plus R filter from the Fujifilm world. And in fairness to them they do a very good job. Uh, this is the yellow filter and you know it's a little bit more bland if you like and this is the green filter which adds a little bit more contrast I think. Remember at the beginning I showed you the uh, classic chrome version of this image, the JPEG that came straight out of the camera. And I really love the way that those classic chrome images are produced. I like the deep blacks and the kind of crushing of the image. Uh, it gives a, a little bit of density. So believe it or not, this is how I start my black and white images. I head down to the profiles and I select classic chrome, camera classic chrome from the film simulation profiles down at the bottom. Now that will immediately give me a very nice muted image, it's going to bring those blacks down a little bit, it's going to give me the density of the image, the starting point that I'm really happy with for the monochrome images. So to recap that a little bit, when I'm doing my post-production to try and get my images into monochrome from a, from a raw file, I will select classic chrome first as the film simulation. The next critical step is the tone curve. This is super, super important. The tone curve area is where you can really start pulling the image around a little bit, changing the highlights and the shadows and using the traditional type S curve if you like, pulling that up and dragging that level down there will immediately start giving you control over the density of the image. By and large you'll get away with just using the basic tone curve, uh, it's known as the linear tone curve but sometimes you're going to need a little bit more so I'm just going to back out of that tone curve and just going to undo it slightly and right back to the neutral now. And then I'm going to click on the point curve icon, that little one there, it's got a little line on it. I'm going to click on that and when it opens up we will then see the RGB channel options. We've got red, green and blue. I'm just going to leave it on RGB for the time being. So now we have much more control. In fact on this line I think you can add up to 14 control points which obviously gives you a lot more control, a lot more granular control over individual parts of the image, the shadows and the highlights. So I'm just adding a few control points here. And as you can see, I've just added three there now, which gives us five in total. Just going to start pulling around the, that tone curve with those control points, just moving them very slightly, very subtly. You don't want to overdo it like that. That's a mistake. So I'm just going to do control Z to back out of that. I'm just going to pull it down again, just until I get to the point where I'm happy with the, the curve. And, and obviously you're visually referencing this by looking at the image itself. So that gives me a curve when I'm editing the black and whites that I'm happy with. And by the way, one of the things that I um, had to find out the hard way is if you want to remove those control points, you need to right click on each of them and just choose remove control point. So now we're ready to convert it to black and white into the monochrome version. And remember that we earlier went all the way down to the profile and we chose classic chrome. So we're basing it off that. Now all I need to do is go back up to the detail panel, uh, the basic panel I should say, and reduce that saturation level. Bring it all the way down to minus 100. It just takes all of the color away from it. If I go back down to the profile and I choose Adobe Standard, watch the image, it just chase, changes very slightly. So that, that classic chrome is being inherited into this black and white. Adobe Standard there and back to the classic chrome. So you can just see it just does the stuff in the background and the details and the shadows that I'm really trying to get into my monochrome. So that's a nice black and white in its own right. I quite like it. And of course I could edit that a little bit more if I wish to. I could, you know, bring down the highlights or increase the shadows, whatever I want to do. But the one thing that happens to all of my wedding pictures and, and you know, and in fairness to many of my personal work also is I try and warm them up. I try and give them a subtle warmth to the images just to, just to make them a little bit different, I guess. And that's all done down in the split tone panel. So here on the right hand side, we have the split tone. Now it used to be that I would only use the shadow area. You have shadows and highlights there, as you can see. Um, now, when I used to do just the shadows, I was happy with that. But as the sensors of the cameras have become subtly different, I found that using the highlight area also has really started to open up the images a little bit more. So to kick the process off, I'm just going to click on that highlight picker there and that brings up the color picker. 
and to make things a little bit quicker I'm just going to type in my starting value which is 29 on the hue and of course you can really play around with this you've every color of the spectrum there in front of you you can do whatever you wish but 29 is my normal default starting point and the saturation value which is basically the strength I normally start at about 6 so you can just see it's very very subtle now if I hold my alt key down on the keyboard and drag the hue slider up and down it will show me a 100% or 100% saturation view of those colors so you can actually choose what you wish there. The moment I take my finger off the alt button it takes us back down to the 6% saturation or whatever value you have in the saturation below. So hue 29 saturation of about 6% is perfect for me it's a good starting point at least. Now the shadows. So my starting value for the shadows is around about 40, something like that. And the saturation is usually about 10, maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit more. Obviously it depends on the individual images and certainly depends on your own stylistic choice. But this is really how I'm bringing that warmth in. You see if I drag that slider up, it shows you the strength and you can choose that pretty easily. So I'm just gonna back this down to the value that I like. Uh, which is around about 10, 11, 10, something like that. That should be about good and that should be perfect. And the final slider and perhaps the most important on the split tone, I suppose, is the balance, which is the one in the middle. Now this essentially is basically giving you the strength of the split tone that you've applied. You can drag that left or right. Now I normally, I'm normally bringing this down to around about minus 84, minus 85, something like that. And you see that it's adding that warmth. It's adding the strength of that split tone, if you like. Now, if I drag it all the way to the right to plus 100, it weakens it. So it kind of takes it away, the warmth. So I'm going to take that back down, something around 84, 85. That's, that's usually my starting point for the, the balance slider. Remember we created that virtual copy earlier so we can uh, reference the image, we can check to see how we're getting on. So I'm gonna go down and use the reference view in Lightroom, which I think is superb by the way. This is a new feature added in one of the recent updates to Lightroom CC. I'm just gonna drag up the original, the one we're working on is on the right hand side and the original edit is there on the left hand side. So I can reference myself, I can check against the image that I want to get to compared to the image that I'm using right now and you can see that there's it's pretty close it's not quite there but it's pretty close one of the final steps then is to try and really emulate that image on the left hand side and I'm going to do that by moving up to the uh, basic panel at the top and I'm going to use the clarity and vibrance sliders for this I'm going to move that clarity up to around about 30 35 something along those lines uh, if I drag it up, you can see that it's just adding a little bit of punch, a little bit of pop. Vibrancy, I'm going to bring in around about 18, 19, 20, something along that level will really, really give that image. You know, it lifts it off the page a little bit and you know we're very, very close to that final image now on the left-hand side. So the final touches then really are back right at the very beginning where we started, where we just adjust the exposure slightly. And I think in this case, I'm just going to bring the shadows down a tiny bit more just to see how we go with those. I'm gonna pop the highlights up and yeah, I think we're really close. Uh, it looks good, it looks good to me. Now the final thing that I might do also is to use the radial dial or the radial filter, I should say to try and um, adjust the exposure a little bit of dodging and burning i'm going to drag it over albie's face now of course what you can see there is that the exposure because i'm using the exposure slider uh, it's it's i've popped the exposure up by nearly one stop but it's applying it to the wrong part so i'm just going to press the invert button now it's applying it to the right part but it's too strong so i'll dial that right the way back uh, probably a quarter of a stop something along those lines i think will be just about right thereabouts perfect just a couple of finishing steps now so I'm going to close that off I'm going to go right the way back down again I'm going to just bring that adjustment down and slightly the exposure just to make it more accurate I'm going to go right back down to the camera calibration panel at the bottom and as you can see there you have control over reds greens blues shadows in those sliders down the bottom and what I'm going to do with this, I'm just going to pull down the hue of the red slider uh, just to see what happens. Watch the image. Just watch as I drag that down slightly. I'm going to bring it, bring it, bring it, bring it. And it's just bringing those red values that are a little bit over, a little bit too high, too hot for my liking. I'm just dragging them down. And then that pretty much is the end of the image. 
I'll close off the reference panel, go back to the single image now. And so that's the uh, raw file that we've been working on. This is the original one, which is slightly brighter actually. So, you know, I've now realized that the original one was a bit too bright. So I'll drag that down slightly. And I think, you know, that looks okay. And that's pretty much identical now to the, uh, to the image that we've edited and brought into place through this process. And now at this point, uh, you know, I typically don't do kind of skin retouching or anything, but of course you, you, you may well do that. And, and actually, if you're doing skin retouching, you will probably have done it right at the beginning. But I'll go in, I'll zoom in, I'll check to see if he's got food around his mouth or, you know, he's asleep in his eye, bless him. All of that kind of stuff, just to make sure the shadows and the highlights and everything is accurate, and, you know, and I'm happy with that image. Okay, so let's have a look at another image very quickly. Uh, there is the uh, original RAW file. I'm just gonna reset it just so you can see that it's the original RAW file. And I have obviously previously edited this with exactly the same process and this is the result. So, you know, very happy with that image. Uh, it's very simple for me to get to that workflow now. I might just bring the exposure down very, very slightly just to make it uh, more accurate for how I want the final image to look. In some cases, I might want to add a very, very slight vignette using the highlight priority. Just drag that down very slightly, usually kind of 10, 15 or so. Actually, in this case, in this image, it probably doesn't need it. It's a little bit overkill, um, but that's how I would finish off the image. So there we have it. So there you go, that's how I do my black and white images from RAW files. I'm fully aware that it's not to everybody's taste and style. I appreciate that totally. It's kind of the way that my business has evolved with these kind of warm looking images, these kind of high contrast ones. And it's the ones that my clients come to me for, especially for the wedding work at least. If you do have any questions, obviously please leave them below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Please like, subscribe, share, all of that stuff that we mentioned earlier. And have a great weekend if you're watching this before the weekend. And I hope you had a good weekend if you're watching it after the weekend. Okay, take care. See you next time.